Hey, Johnny. Wait, I called you Johnny. That's your that's your handle. <laughs> uh -huh. Do you prefer TJ or Johnny? TJ is fine. Okay. Anyway, this is uh, Jonah Falcon from Gaming Podcast and TJ Denzer from Shack News. Yep. And right now we're going to play Prince of Persia, but the the one that nobody liked when it was released. Really, people didn't like this. They hated that they. <laughs> They didn't like it for the stupidest reasons. One, well, you never die. You, she, Alec always saves you. Well, so what? <laughs> you still have to load, uh, quick and reload. And this is Prince of Persia. It's instead of having time reset, they just have her save you. So people, people's argument is that it was too easy. No, they also hated, hated, hated the ending. Oh. and I can understand why. But this is my favorite of the Prince of Persia games. For one thing, I love the cell shaded look. Yeah, it looked gorgeous. And also, I like the characters. I like the Prince and Elika in this much more than the other characters from Prince of Persia. I know she she's a lot like Farah in a lot of ways. Of course, Farah in this is a donkey. <laughs> so. Some some people would fall down that hole and fall on their face. Not him. He's too cool for that. <laughs> that would have been funny if he just face planted. So right <laughs> here, we're going to take a, a second to look at the... Oh, first you have to watch uh, Elika running with some guys after. I never really understood why these guys are chasing her down. Ah, and, of course, this is what we call a meat cute. <laughs> and, of course, there's the always the... Uh, this is not what it looks like. Situation. She didn't come this way. Come on. So. She didn't come that way. They were just chasing her. <laughs> well, they didn't see her. They didn't look to look down. So one of the other things um, that's specific to the PC version, which we're playing. Oh damn. Is that? Um, oops. What am I doing? Is that it did not come with the DLC. Wall running. And, which is unfortunate because the DLC actually explains his actions in the, uh, in the ending of... And, you know, I tried to double jump. There's no double jumping in this. Mm -hmm. Oop. And there's also no run and fast. This, and this was like a full reboot, yeah, right? Yeah, this is like, a reboot. There's no, da there's no dagger of time in this one. No. Actually, a little, a little trivia. There was actually a DSK game called The Fallen King. Which actually um, was sort of a sequel to this, but it was only on the DS. And no matter what the, uh, no matter what the version, I've never liked the combat in. Oop, like, wrong button. I've never liked the combat in any Prince of Persia game. Hmm. Oh, pick him up and just toss him around. You wish you'd opted for conversation so, now, don't you? <laughs> oh. She's not so helpless. Um, yeah, and you can run too. One of the things about this game is that... Why are you following me? Something... I, I, I sent you an article. I don't know if you read it. But everything in this game is diegetic. You and your girlfriend should get out of here. Girlfriend? There, you, you might notice the reason why there's no, there's no death is because there's no death. Because in this game, if you die, you die for real. So, Elika rescuing is a part of the game. It's not just a game mechanic. And one of the... One of the puzzles that people get stuck on, which has the easiest answer, is um, there's one boss called the Concubine. And in it, she um, spawns 12 identical Elikas and dares you to find her. And people can't figure out who Elika is. Um, maybe I'm telling this story a little early because it doesn't introduce the uh, the, mecha uh, the mechanic that she does for you. Hmm. Okay, so I think this is where no, it happens. Nothing to do with this. Right. No. So here you'll notice this this happens. Looks like he's gonna die, but she saves him by magically lifting him out of danger. And this happens any time you would normally die. So, in the puzzle that I was mentioning, the way you solve the puzzle is extremely easy. You run and jump off the tower, and the real Elika will save your life. We better get out of here. How did you do that? 
Now, this is foreshadowing for the ending of the game. Right. And you being able to do magic isn't anything. And if you've played this more than once, you'll notice, oh, oh, I see what's going on. They're trying to kill you. Okay, fine. Keep your secrets. But at least tell so. me how to escape. In this no, game, we I don't know. I've got to get to the In the other games, we knew that the prince was a prince. He never had a name, but he was actually a prince. Here, yeah. he's just called the prince, but we don't know if he's actually a prince or not, or if he's telling the truth about anything about himself. He's very evasive about himself. He's obviously a thief of some sort, or a pirate. But he also well, talks about his parents thief. being deposed and all this stuff, so he could be a prince. I'm not in a good mood. Look at those abs. I blocked right and pick him up. I oh, just get out of here. You're just a normal human. <laughs> Nobody ever wants to fight to the death. They just want to fight until they want to. Yeah, until away. you start meeting the corrupted. Then they just want to fight because they're cursed. Look at those abs. I Hooray. wish I had abs like that. You know, you, you get abs from being... Oh, yeah, that's right. So one of the best things about this is actually talking to her is actually fun. Which way is this temple? And the more you talk to her, the more you learn about her. But we're not... So, yeah. It, usually I don't like brown games, but... This is a very beautiful brown. And there's always something visually interesting in the game. Mm -hmm. And also, this is the first game I ever played. Um, I see, here's the thing. I played the other Prince of Persia games after this one. So maybe my... Um, no. So maybe my uh, opinion is sort of tainted, but... Um, I've never... Yeah, I get it. Okay. Just throw him off. Oh, damn it, I keep forgetting to, to block. Just get him out of here. These are uh, servants of the, of the uh, Morning King. Morning as in crying. Why is he so sad? Oh. Well, to tell you really why he's so sad would be spoiling the game. Oh. <laughs> but, um, he had to make a deal with Aramon, who is the evil god in this. Okay, thank you. I don't have a right mouse button. <laughs> okay, fine. If you want me to use the right... Why is this paused? Let me do this. Maybe that'll block it out. I think you uh, need to do right trigger. I did do right trigger. I'm trying to do right trigger. It's just frozen. Oh, that's fun. Oh, there we go. Now, there, if, here's the thing, um, one of the, one of the things that, uh, yes, I already, didn't we do this tutorial already? You did it, like, by sheer... No, they told me to. <clears throat> oh, I had to hold it down. There, there's the Morning King. So, he's in mourning because, um, Elika was sacrificed to imprison Araman. And she had to sacrifice her life to do it. Oh. So he made a deal with Araman. He would resurrect the temples there, under the tree. Elika in exchange for his freedom. So Elika there is a walking dead woman. <laughs> or was. Can I run? <laughs> no, I can't run. I can jump. Look at this. So, yeah, everything you see in the distance, and this is one of the first games to do this, any, everything you see, you can visit. Oh, nice. And you can see your future up there, and once you get over here to this, um, she's going up there, but I'm going to stop over here. So, these four, these four tablets represent um, each of the uh, people you have to defeat. And when you go to the map, you can take any choice you want and go anywhere you want. Normally, it's uh, from left to right, you know, here, left to right is from easiest to hardest, but you can go straight to hardest first if you wanted to. Ooh, straight up like a level select. Yeah. Nice. It's a very pretty level select. Now you just crawl up this. 
Uh, when you're with her... Uh, oh, don't do that. <laughs> of course, um, he survives that. <laughs> he doesn't break any shin bones. He just... Just lands. Gravity oh, no stop that. See, I'm jumping, and I shouldn't be jumping. Well, except for that. Uh, we're gonna the rest of the game is going to be me here navigating this crap. Yeah, see, he... I don't... What's in the okay, so let's, let's push. Uh, push this. Okay. Watch. Anytime you can talk to her. I've never met a princess before. So. I've observed a few from a distance. This game. Uh, so here's the thing. Um, the reason why people hated the ending of this game, without giving anything away, is that it forced you to undo all the work you had already done. Everything you had done was you undid and was quote unquote a waste of time but i didn't see it like that it was a logical part of the story and the character development demanded it so a lot of people hated that ending nope have to jump up here and grab the knocker boom He's in that tree. <laughs> He's in this tree here. Or this tree actually is holding him back. And the reason why um, she's running away is that it's weakening. And she wants to collect all the light seeds and make it uh, make it heal again so that it can keep Armand in there. Oh. But there's a reason why uh, Grumpy Dad here doesn't want her to do that. So. I cannot lose you again. And already it's telling you the plot. I mean, I can't stand to lose you again. In other words, I don't want you to die again. Okay, so for a 12-year-old game, I'll reveal what happens. So this entire thing is that you getting the... Oh, I think I have a quick time event here. Nope. Oh. So... Live, Elika, live. So, what Elika is doing is she's collecting light seeds, which is basically um, to transfer all of her life force into that tree. Which means she dies. To sa she sacrifices her life to uh, keep to keep um, Araman imprisoned. But guess what you do? <laughs> Oh dear. Ah, he just freed Aramon. That was the deal! I save Elika, and uh, I free you. Let's get out of here. So he frees Aramon as part of the deal. Oh, and there's one of the corrupted. I think we need a better oh no, it's a heartless! <laughs> yeah, basically, yeah. <laughs> so. What the corrupted are are um, yeah. So you can use her. She um, specially damages these guys with their with their magic attacks. But my favorite thing is to grab them <coughs> and toss them off the uh, uh, thing because that takes care of them quickly. Anyways, that worked too. Yeah. Well, here you're not able to do it. Um, in game, you're able to do it a lot easier. Do, 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 roll run. What will we do without so, wall do running? So, do people ever come? people ever come around on this game, or do they still hate it? I think people who loved it still love it, and people who play it now have reassessed it. It's like a lot of up. Oh, see, here's the thing: if I can manage to attack that, oh no. So, if I had managed to attack it. Um, I could actually defeat it before it actually um, came in. How rude. Well, I mean, nice of him to not throw you off the cliff and actually pull you away from the ledge. Well, he, he can't. <laughs> because Elika here will save me anyway. Okay, so let's open this door. Whoops. No! 
Or I could just fall into oh, the uh, goop and uh, have Elika needlessly save me. See, that's the pr thing that a lot of people ha problem had with this game, is that you can't die, but then again, that would break the flow of the game. You want to keep moving, you know? Uh, uh. And then you have to watch out for the black gunk there. And I just made a mistake. It's hard to play this game uh, while I'm talking to someone else. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> so yeah, we have to get, we have to, we have to avoid the Promethean goo. No. See, this is actually the sequel to Alien, uh, Le this is the latest Alien, up. Oh, no, I am crazy. So I have to do a double jump. Oh, I have to run. Okay. So All right, she's gonna swing me over. Whoop. Yeah. So pressing E while you're jumping actually uh, has her magically toss you a bit. So it's it's this game's version of a double jump. <laughs> Look at this now. All that pretty scenery. It's sad and gunky yeah, and gray. It's shooting ink into the sky. The impetus for you to um every uh, is to turn gray areas into beautiful and verdant again. Any more of your relatives going to try and kill us? <laughs> or is it just your father who wants to end the world? Do you think I wanted any of this? It's all her fault. This wouldn't be happening if her father didn't love her so much. The more the lesson is, don't love your children. Not fully. The temple must still have the power to continue. <laughs> Something's happened to the fertile grounds. If we can get to them, we might be able to stop Aram yeah. and escape. So, there's a lot of things that happened this week. And, um, one of the newest things that I just found out happened is that, um, Civilization VI is not finished yet. We have to get out of here. Fine, run! Yeah, they're doing a, it's like, it looks like a season yeah, pass. Yeah, so it's a new season pass called New Frontiers. And the first civilization they showed off was the Maya. And I could have sworn they had the Maya, but maybe I'm thinking of a previous civilization. I think they had the Aztecs. Oh, okay. Well, then... With Montezuma. But I'm pretty sure the Maya were part of uh, another civilization that were earlier in the game. But... Now here's the problem. I don't play Civilization VI as much as I used to. So the question is, do I really want to get this new season pass? Even though I don't play Civilization VI that much anymore. On the other hand, I'm a completionist idiot, and I might get it just to make sure that if I do play, I have access to a bunch more uh, uh, levels. So here is where you can um, get your seeds. Huh. And you'll notice that there are pathways, and what happens is that if you when you select a path, there's actually a light arrow that'll show you which way to go. Okay, I need to choose a destination. So, neat, 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 neat. No, I think it wants me to choose not the ending, just that. Okay. D. No, oh, yeah. So you, someone, you have Elika tell you which way you're supposed to go. I could have. I wish there was a run option. Oh, and they want me to talk to Elika. So, what do you think? It looks cool as all heck. Like, I really love the aesthetic of it. The the being saved all the time thing is kind of odd, but... No, 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 no. I was talking about Civ. But if it, like... <laughs> wow. But hey, you want to talk about this game? I was like, I can go I was like, well, I'll just talk, keep talking I was while up we're in doing this. this. I was wrapped up in this game because I've actually, like, this is one of those games that I just never got to. And it really sucks. I mean, it is backwards compatible on the Xbox One. But if you get it on Steam, <laughs> there's no um, there's no DLC, and the DLC contains critical critical uh, uh, downloadable content. It contains the entire epilogue. Although, even so, um, this game still wants me to talk to her. You have that little Elika face flashing. Yeah, I love their banter too. Oh, okay, I'm not going to talk to her even if it wants me to because. Um, so yeah, if you uh, well, we can talk about Prince of Persia fir uh, first then. 
Uh, we have to go this way? Well, as for Sim itself, I think it's cool that they are still doing stuff for it. I think everybody thought they were going to start thinking about Civ 7 at this point. Look at the sky. <laughs> yeah, the the aesthetic of this game is very cool. I like the visuals. I don't know if there's going to be a Civ 7 anytime soon, to tell you the truth. Sounds like it, because they're about to do this whole season pass, and that's probably going to take them through to next year. Uh, we're going to have a vision now. Uh, so, what's interesting is that there's a ton of backstory, and um, I believe that Penny Arcade actually did a story for one of the worse? characters. They're the corrupted. Aramans chosen. Did a comic about they one of the characters. Years ago. So <laughs> Ubisoft was really serious about doing this reboot. And even though this is a great game, uh, no one. No one, no one, um, ended up, uh, uh, catching on to it. No! Oh boy. This is how you die. I think part of the reason is I'm trying to get used to the PC controls. Mm hmm There we go. Because one of the other things is that, uh, when you do the Y thing, it actually tells you which way to go. And how to do it. So, most of this game is not figuring out puzzles so much as... Testing your physical, uh, your, oh, uh, so you have this gunk on the wall. You can't touch it. <laughs> right, so you can do this. Grab onto this. You have to press B to grab it, and then you, oh, I, I keep wanting to jump from there, but you have to be patient, Grasshopper. You just have to hold and wait, and then he'll pull himself up. See, and I cannot hey. touch that black stuff, and it's reaching out to me. Naughty tentacles. It's gross. <laughs> All right, and I have to grab onto that. And a lot of it is uh, you start getting into a rhythm. You know how you remember the early Assassin's Creed games? Am I supposed to go this way uh -huh. or the other way? Yeah, this way. Um, in which combat was just a single button press. Same thing here. There's sort of like a rhythm you get to, so that when you get those rings, you don't worry. You jump it. You just press B, or do something incredibly stupid like that. People are going to say, man, you really suck at Prin uh, Prince of Persia. <laughs> so, like, uh, uh, the last time we did, like... Did it again. I'm not going to get the achievement for not being saved by Elika all the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, the last time that we did a whole bunch of Civ DLC, they kind of focused in on making civilizations that were that utilized different regions that were really hard to work in before. Like Canada being able to snow, yeah. And then and then uh the the one that starts out on the sea and begins with sailing and that would be, gets bonuses. That would be the Polynesian uh I forgot exactly which Polynesians, but yeah. But the point is that they, they had a whole bunch of uh civilizations in the last DLC packs that were like Specially tuned towards utilizing regions that were hard to survive in before. So what are they going to do with these new ones? You think? Well, I mean, they're going to do more of the uh, dealing with the architecture. Um, with the Mayans, they're really dealing with um, science and uh, creating. Um... Oh. No, I forgot. That's bad. <laughs> See, the problem is that there are vines that you can climb. And I thought those were vines. So, um... Well, see here, their vines were there, and I didn't notice them. I'm really killing myself, see, here. And watch, these things are just gonna reach for you and say, Hey, yummy he living t flesh for us to... <sighs> what am I doing? Help! Should have just dropped. There's another problem um, with me playing this game is that other games I've played have the wall running, but do it completely different. I think I played Titanfall 2 way too recently. Hmm. All right, I have to just go down with an F4. 
And I could swear that um, the Xbox version plays better. And there's a reason for that, actually. I think because I'm putting this on max graphic settings, there's sort of a lag. Hmm. So, yeah, uh, the way they described the Mayans was that they had an, an observatory. Oh, and they had a new archer, uh, which is a more powerful version of the archer, which, uh, you know. Other than that, I don't know. I think they were taking advantage... Oh, check this. Defiance of gravity. That's just... <laughs> Like, I know Prince of Persia is all about mobility, but that's... Come on, now. And the the best part is that once he actually says, it's not like gravity ever killed anybody, my answer is, well, it hasn't killed you yet. What are you... Where are you going? I have to run on this wall. So, I'm looking forward to it. I, I... You know, I probably will buy the DLC. Ah, so... Here's the hunter. We'll be fine. Well, these boss battles I hate. They, they're never really any fun. See so if we can get Elika involved. There you go. Go for it, Elika. Woo! You go, girl. Oh, fuck. Okay, so. So she resets the entire fight. Um, I was supposed to press something else there. <laughs> I have no idea what because it didn't give me a letter. Hmm. Man, this guy is chunky. He's like kind of a hunchback, but he's also kind of a... Okay. Okay, at least I knew that was B because it was red. Yeah. Oh, that's blue, so I guess it's X. Uh, I would prefer a letter, though. <laughs> call me, call me stupid. I like I said, none of the boss battles are any good. One of them's a. Puzzle I didn't even boss. realize this was a boss battle. <laughs> there we go. Take him out, Elka. So, the other thing that happened this week was uh, Microsoft showed off what they were getting. Which we discussed in the, uh... In the podcast. And there's some interesting stuff. I actually did a poll, um, on the day of the, uh... Expo oh, he's running away. So, uh, and I wasn't too surprised when I did the poll. Um, I asked which was the better off-road racing game. And uh, I chose. I said, "Dirt or Forza Horizon?" And Dirt won by a wide margin. Oh yeah, uh, Codemasters has always been really good with that. Okay, so you want to see something beautiful? So this is our goal in the game. We're gonna make the ugly look beautiful, and it really is beautiful, by the way. Nice. You're destroying life to the world. And then you see that glowy thing? We have to pick those up. Those are light seeds. Oh, uh, for Well, in order to move it forward in the game, in it's, case. Collect, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's more like the uh, orbs in Crackdown, to tell you the truth. You don't have to get all 1,001 orbs. You just have to get enough to be able to move on to the next location. There's a lot of ship teasing. So, getting back, so, uh, one of the games they showed at the Xbox Series X video was Forza. I'm not Forza, I mean Dirt. And, uh, it looked really, really good. Yeah, there was a lot of good things in that whole lineup. Yeah, but with racing games, that's usually, those are the games that have the least, um, they have the they're the least taxing to make graphics for so you can pump all the graphic goodness into um, shiny cars and the dirt that you put on yeah but in this case you had 
volumetric mud and snow and so, you'll notice anytime there's a new console, they always show off some driving game to show how great the graphics are. Yeah. Let's hope he keeps having bright ideas. I think the game that everybody was talking about from that, at least I was, was Scorn. <laughs> Gee, I wonder why. Yeah, the the one that had all the HR Giger uh, porny art. I don't know if it was porny. It was just very suggestive. A... Oh, I can't go that way. I I would almost start deep corny. Um, if that's your porn, I don't want to know you. <laughs> I mean, come on. There is straight up like a wall dick that leaks you. <laughs> they also had a weird version of pregnancy too. Mm-hmm. Now you'll notice that she clings to your back. Everything that happens in this game is diegetic. You'll notice they. Well, which is why, um, when you're alone, you actually feel alone, because she's not there, she's not helping you, you know, and all that stuff. All the banter is gone. But that's neither here nor there. But yeah, uh, uh, and the game is, had been worked on for a while. This is a game I'd never heard of. But it apparently had been. Which one was that? Back in 2013. Oh, Scorn. Yeah. Yeah, it's been around for a minute. Which, like, I wonder what it was that finally got them to come out of the woodwork. Now. That was not what I was supposed to do, but it worked out anyway. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, um, see, that's the stuff that really impresses me. Not, you know, not. I want stuff that's weird and different and something I've never seen before. And I've never seen a game that was going to be like that. Well, okay, I did men I did I did snark that it looked like the uh, sequel to um, to to uh, Agony, which was another game that was heavy on the. Uh, but that was not. Here's the thing. What, what am I looking at? Oh, ooh, look at this. See all those? It's like the it's like the orbs in Crackdown. It's like how am I going to get there? <laughs> um, why is it not allowing me to? So yeah, I mean, if there's some games that just need a uh, a big a big audience, and it definitely got it. Yeah, I would like a lot of the games that were on that inside Xbox live stream. It, like me. they I weren't. Know what's bothering me. Oh, no. Go ahead. I would say that, like, a lot of those games were games that I don't know if I'd go out of my way to go find, but, like, they were interesting to see on there. Like, The Ascent, that looked kind of good. Yeah. And uh, one of the games is from a Chinese developer, and, and um, Bright... Oh, I forgot the name of it. Bright... Um, you know, the car shooty thing. That everybody said looked a lot like. That didn't help. What was the name of that game? Um, Bright, Contr uh, you know, the game with the uh, with the car and the shooting and the. Uh... Oh. Uh... Bright memory infinite. Yeah. That's already. I, I didn't know it was already out on. Um... It's on, it's on Steam. Steam. Yeah. But, you know, here's the other thing. A lot of people complained that it wasn't wasn't that impressive uh, looking all those games and I figured out why because um, I did not watch the live stream so here's the thing about the live stream it was in why am I not able to there's something I'm not I'm, I'm not getting here I have to go to something else oh there we go we have to go this way um, the live stream was not in the, in 60 frames per second. Ah! I watched it on um, you. on YouTube, you know, not the live stream, but you know what was left at 4K and 60 frames. So it obviously looked a lot better to me. 
But people who were watching uh -huh. it live on live stream did not it did not look good to them. Because it was um at whatever their browser was and at thirty frames per second. So you didn't get the full you didn't get the full treatment. Yeah, I mean, like, w one of the things that did come through when we were watching that trailer is, like, the weather effects were just... Astounding on the bright game, yeah. Gor yeah. Yeah, they were gorgeous. And I don't think that's something that you could have, like, got away in with I'm not gonna get used to that. in the previous technologies, or in the current technologies, we know it. The, the ray tracing is, like... It's really coming through on games like that where like they really go out of their way to push the the weather effects, the light sources, all that jazz. Stand back. Now, if I was if I was able to position myself, I could have just thrown him off the edge. Careful. Let's see if I can do it here. First, there you go. Oh, man. See you. Get out of here. Oh, nope. Oh, well. He hit the wall instead. That's oh, but he did fall. <laughs> so, let's see. So, here's the thing. I cannot get to the next thing without getting 60 seeds. Ah. Uh, so, what I can do is I can have myself run to this area. And now she's going to... See, and I don't know if... Hmm? I, don't know, I don't know if I understand why people, like, if they were huge fans of, like... When I look at the combat in this game, it makes me think of like the original Prince of Persia, where you would like get into these one-on-one -on -one duels, and each one like was. Yeah. I I here's the thing, fighting is not what this particular game does best. That's all I'm saying. I don't know. The fighting looks kind of cool to me. Like, it, it. it reminds me. <laughs> it reminds me of the original games. Did you play the original game? I did after I played this game. See, that's probably why I told you. That's probably why I'm biased against the other games. Or not so much against, but I don't have the same uh, all-abiding love that I do for the uh, for the originals. That people do this. Now, I'm not talking about like... This is sort of like the DMC... Dagger. Uh, it's also sort of like the DMC uh, situation in which people weren't going to like this game no matter what. Because it was a new developer, it's a new interpretation of the character. It's an all new bright uh, uh, graphic style. Yeah, but when I but when I say the original games, I I do want to say I'm not talking about the like the Dagger of Time trilogy. I'm talking about the ones that were on like Commodore 64 oh. that were like 2D. Oh, you're talking about Jordan Mechner's original. <laughs> uh huh. Oh, uh, what's you know how he animated the um the the prince in that game. He uh, videotaped his brother doing all this parkour in his underwear, his younger brother, and he just rotoscoped it from there. I don't know if you get I, ah. I don't know if you could get away with that in this day and age, but but yeah, that's kind of weird. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was good. But like at the time, it looked. Was... Hey, you wanna? You know, it would have probably happened. See, I cannot pass this because there's black goo there, and it'll eat me. <laughs> like if you try to jump over jump it, it'll over jump it. up and grab you in midair. <laughs> you can't jump over it. Oh! Hey, look, I saved myself. Am I going the right way? Which direction? I no, I'm not. See, that's... What... Oh, I do have to jump over it. Ah, you must cross the goo. I think I can jump over Oh, I can jump over it. Oh, I can't jump over that. Oh, but I can go on the vines. Now, when did you first play a Prince of Persia game? Like I said, I, I way way back before uh, the the three D. Oh, actually, Jordan Mechner did a uh, Prince of Persia three D, and it was it was bad. Really? Uh, it wasn't like this. It wasn't it wasn't parkour. It was just doing the game in three D, and it did not translate. That's for, uh, for those you don't know the original game. Um, was basically, I think, like 120 rooms, and you had to use. Hold on, right into the goo. Um, you had to use. Uh, you had to be able to maneuver it. You know, do all the. You know, platforming basically. It was a platforming game, and 
-huh. it was it, it was known for having the smoothest animation every anybody had ever seen in a in a game. Yeah, that was like Commodore sixty four days. Yeah. And there was actually an XBLA version of that game called um, Prince of Persia Remastered, which is basically the same game except with modern graphics. I huh. wonder if it's uh, backwards compatible. Where am I supposed to go? Alaka, honey, can you tell me? Oh, I have to go up. See, that's what I also like, is that you really can't get lost. The game is not about being a maze. The game is about, hey, can you maneuver this, and can you do it as much as you can without dying? Or, not dying, but falling. Oh, wait, see, here's a, um... Figure out which way to go. So, these light cubes I'm, I'm, I'm getting are to buy... Or to buy abilities, basically. Then make our way across. Make our way across to what? Let's find out. And all we're doing is we're running in. Oh, that was stupid. Like I said, oh, well, guess what? I just had her toss me deeper into the crap. <laughs> uh, I do own the original, and it's backwards compatible on the Xbox One. So, but this was ten dollars on. Ooh. Yes. But if you remember in the original original, original, original yeah. you would uh you would get into duels with like other swordsmen and it would be like a one on one duel. There was, and it would be like a dire duel, like you had to make the right moves or they would just like stab you and kill you instantly. Yeah. The other thing was that um it was a timed game in a way. There was a timed game, but if you took too long, the princess would die. Even if you beat the quote unquote beat the game, you'd be there too late. The game would end, and she would de she's dead. In order to save the princess, you had to beat it in a, I think in 30 minutes. Yeah, that was and that was tough to do back then. Well, the entire game was sort of like a roguelike. You only you, you had to see how far you could get. And defy mm -hmm. gravity again. And defy gravity even more. Oh, look at this. Whoop. <laughs> Try and do that. In real life, see if you can defy gravity like that. <laughs> Do I have to go up? No. Alga, honey, which way am I supposed to go? Oh, that way. So, yeah. Um, a lot of people are angry at Microsoft and Ubisoft over the quote unquote gameplay of Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Yeah. I think they. I mean. Oh, there's the hunter. That was a. That sure was a lot of, of cinematics for. Uh, yeah, I, what was claimed to be a gameplay trailer. Uh, you know, when people say gameplay trailer, they don't mean in-game cutscene. <laughs> and I mentioned this. I counted. It was a. It was a one hundred one minute and thirty-one second trailer, and there was about ten seconds that that I was convinced was actually in-engine in stuff. Ouch. See, I'm glad it's color coded at least, so it's not like. And I said this on the podcast is that. Oh, I failed. I didn't want it uh, hard enough. Um, Senuous, uh, Senuous Saga Hellblade 2 is a better Viking game. Or at least it looks like a better Viking game. Damn it. I mean, are you... I don't yeah. know if I'm excited that much for another... Oh! oh. I thought I was going to get him in the I think... there. I don't think I can do it. I can do it with a boss. I mean... Watching both trailers, people were more intrigued by what was going on in, um, I think I had to, uh, do a right thing. I think gray means right trigger. No, nope, that's why. I almost have him killed, though. Look, his health bar is nearly down. I mean, her praying to Tyr and Odin is, is a lot more interesting than whatever I saw. I don't think... Like, I didn't really get much context out of that, uh... 
Oh, that uh, Valhalla trailer. Well, you knew who the main character was. That's about it. Yeah. And I think it's like... it It's all, a little bit of apples to oranges to me. Because, like, Sinwa's... The Sinwa games look like very focused experiences. The, the first one was definitely a very focused experience. I wouldn't say Corridor, but... I would say, like, they had a direction they wanted you to go and pushed you towards it. Get out of here. Whereas, at this point, the Assassin's Creed games... They have more in common with, like, Shadow of Mordor and uh, Shadow of War than they do with, like, the original Assassin's Creed. Yeah, uh, not even that. I don't even think they're that... The Assassin's Creed games are even that detailed. I think it's more like the Mafia games. You know? Think you so? Know, I, they're not as... They're not... Uh, see, Shadow of War games are, are a lot more nuanced and detailed. And any upgrades you get actually have matter, you know? I mean, Assassin's Creed is just numbers now. Your sword uh. is 1.3 uh, better than your previous sword. And I never liked the fact that you had to be a certain level to assassinate someone. When in Assassin's Creed, the first Assassin's Creed, the second Assassin's Creed, when you stab someone in the back of their neck, they're going to die. <laughs> they're not going to... Well, they're getting the... Uh... They're getting the little wristy blade thing back this time. Yeah, but it's not going to kill people. I, I, my understanding was it was be, one hit kill. It will be one kill. No matter what level kill, the person yeah. is. Yeah. Okay. If you use it properly. Well, using it properly means you just even it, the bots. That's what you do. Because even in Assassin's Creed like two, there were some enemies that you had to like open up their armor to get to them with that blade. Oh, by the way, um, when I ran Game Stooge, the Game Stooge Games of the Years, um, this game also won mu uh, Soundtrack of the Year. It does sound very pretty. Um, the end credits have a uh, Monto. See, I have to be patient, because he's going to lift himself up one. See? There you go. Uh, has, a, has a medley of all the music in it, and it is... Oop, so I have to get there somehow. See, here I can't ask her because it's not someplace I'm trying to get to in terms of location. I just want to see if I can somehow get there. Nope, that's not going to work. See, one of the things about this system is it allows you to experiment. Because basically, this is a lot of um, exploration as well. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're trying to get those light, light sources so you can gain new abilities, which is necessary to ahead of the game, etc., etc. And like I said, you know, I know that they're apples and oranges in terms of mood and gameplay and all that stuff, but I don't care. The uh, Senua's, uh, Senua's Saga looks more interesting to me. The yeah. Uh, you know, Assassin's Creed looks incredibly generic, and the problem is that Assassin's Creed itself has become incredibly generic unto itself. You know, oh yeah, it's another... You'll have people saying, it's just another Assassin's Creed game. That's not going to work. That's not because I'm bad, it's because I'm trying to figure out if there's a way for me to get there. Looks like I have to go down this way. Yep. So we do have a question that's been posed to us. And I asked you it to, so you could have some time to uh, figure it out. And the question is, what is what obscure game do you want to see remastered most? Because here's the problem. There's a lot of great games, but a lot of them simply won't run. And here, it used to be, it's a PC game. You can just run it on PC. No, that Grim Fandango proved that, you know, some games won't work on new systems. They're not, they you know... So, for you, it doesn't have to be a PC game, obviously. What game do you most want to uh, see remastered? That's kind of obscure that not a lot of people have been clamoring for. Hmm. Ah. Right. The one that immediately comes to mind, I'm not sure if it's all that obscure. It came out around the same time as Final Fantasy VII. It was kind of overshadowed by it. It was Xenogears. Mm. 
that's something that people, uh, uh, you know, I, I know people who have been asking for that. I mean, it's not... There we go. I got it. And this one, too. See, I gotta use some cleverness with these. There we go. So, why Xenogears? Um, a lot of reasons. For one thing, the game actually isn't finished. <laughs> like, it was... <laughs> then it wouldn't be a remaster now, would it? <laughs> <laughs> they they had all these they had all these plans for the second boom. So half of that's the, game. the reward for getting to it early. You can defeat an enemy before he actually forms. Oh, nice. But like they had all these plans to uh, do all sorts of different things with the second half mm -hmm. of the game, including like a character that would have an extra character that would have been in there and like a upgrade of a certain mech. But uh, they never got there because they ran into they ran into budget issues, and then they had a release date released? they had to meet. It was done in 1990. I think it was 1999. I could have sworn there was another sure Xeno Gears that was released. It had you had to get a robot. Xeno Saga, oh. which is basically Bandai Namco bought the uh, rights to the Xeno series from Square Enix, and uh, they did. They did that uh, trilogy, which is not very good, in my opinion. I mean, eventually they would make Xenoblade Chronicles, Pretty so people the, will argue that is. <laughs> Get a yeah. Nut. Eventually they they made Xenoblade Chronicles, so people will probably oh, okay. argue that it became worthwhile eventually. But is it the same game? I mean, not. I don't mean. No, it's very, very, very different. the The original Xeno Gears is a turn-based JRPG with a uh, heavy martial arts aesthetic to it. Like, basically, everyone in the game is a kung fu fighter, but also they have mechs. So you were saying that everybody was kung fu fighting? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and those kids were, in fact, fast as lightning. Well, not lightning from fantasy, uh, Final Fantasy, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's a boring move. But yeah, like they never, they never finished their and original intentions for Xeno Gears, and they like released all of their ideas that they had for the game in a big old compendium. I think if I wanted a game to be re remastered, I would want the original Xeno Gears to be remastered and like made into a complete edition. So when I think about things that have to be remastered. Um, uh, what am I doing? That's... Oh, okay. Never mind. Um, things that I think have to be remastered... I always think of... Uh, uh, nope. You become so dependent on her that... When she's gone, it's like... Really being alone. Okay, so I'm about to grab my 60th Light Seed. Which means I can warp right back to the temple. Dee -dee. Or I have to go back to the temple. Oh, I can temple. Yeah, I can teleport there. Boom, I'm at the temple. So now, look at this. These things open up. We're alive, so we must be trapped. What game would you want to what game would you want to Well, I was about to get to it, so <clears throat> Way back in the day, Electronic Arts was not a corporation, so they didn't have to deal with shareholders. And the reason why they were called Electronic Arts is because a bunch of developers, major developers, were tired of working for people like Atari and stuff like that, and they wanted to strike it out, and they wanted to make their own games. So, Electronic Arts had their album games. For those who don't know, the games they made weren't in boxes, they were in albums. With the power from here, we could and some of them are very famous. I mean, you might have heard of Madden. <laughs> mm -hmm. But, um, there are some games that, you know, I really love. They're from the out from that, from that. There was Archon, there was Bard's Tale. There was, um, yes. Adventure yes. Construction Set and Racing Destruction Set and all that. But there's one game. Why I have found this Watch this. And run! Woo! 
I'm running up a wall. <laughs> and then I get on these things and I have to press and... And then I have to make sure that I turn. If I hit anything, I'll be reset back to the beginning. It's easier here, obviously, but it's a real pain in the ass in later levels. Yeah, I imagine it gets pretty tough. Yeah, it's like Crash Bandicoot on, on drugs. But there's one game that I haven't seen any other game like, and it's called Mail Order Monsters. Oh, I've heard of that. I haven't played it. So, in it, you choose one of 12 types of monsters, from living plants to T-Rexes to Kaiju, you know, to Godzilla, to um, even just a human, which is... I think it's supposed to be something like Jet Jaguar or Ultraman, you know, one of those giant robot men. And you put them in vats and you upgrade them, like you can give them tentacles or claws. And one of the best parts is when you did that, it was reflected on the character like your, your T-Rex would have tentacles coming out of the back. And then um, the entire part, of the, uh, crux of the game is you plop your monster down in a gigantic map and the other person would plop their monster down in the gigantic map. And you'd, uh, you know, you'd do certain things on the map, like fight, and then you'd have a big fight. It would be you versus the other monster. One big kaiju match. One of them may have a gun. The other may have psychic powers, you know? Nice. And it's that I really miss. So, yeah, Mail Order yeah. Monsters. Just look it up. It's, it's, a, it's a game that we have not... We have not seen anymore. You know what? I just remembered the one that I really, really, really uh -huh. want. Like, I actually, I actually want this game so badly that I look for it on uh, on retro gaming shelves whenever I go out there and look and look around. Okay. It's uh, Alundra. I have never heard of it. Al Alundra is a Zelda-like game, which was on PS One. Okay. Which is why I never heard of it. <laughs> I'm tr I'm looking up who did it really quick, just so. Uh, it was done by Matrix Software. Oh, I, I don't know who Matrix know. Software is. Actually, there's another Matrix Software. I don't know if it's the same Matrix Software. One Matrix Software does nothing but, but uh, war games. They're they're with Slytherine. You know, it's Matrix Slytherine. So I doubt it's the same one. Oh. They did uh they did some uh, ports of uh, Professor Layton over to okay. mobile. That's the that's some of the most recent thing they did. They also did ports of Final Fantasy three, four, and five. Okay. So it looks like they do a lot of porting like of classic games over to mobile devices. So this game, Alundra. So Alundra is. It's a Zelda-like journey in which you're a character that is a dreamwalker. And that means that you can enter the dreams of other people and uh, fix things, basically. If, if they're having nightmares, you uh, can kill I, the nightmares. I had, to jump. I had to do a double jump before I did that. <laughs> oh, no, I had to go on the other side. Are you okay? I'll be fine. No. So did it look like Zelda? It did. It it had a a lot of Zelda Look, qualities. He's just reading it was for in me. that time. Come here, you! I want that tasty man flesh. <laughs> um, it was in a, it was in that time where are we now? on the PS One era where they were starting to like fiddle with three D graphics, but they still had a lot of two D sprites to it. Oh, okay. So uh, it was like three D environment, two D sprites. And your character, you could jump in Alundra, which was like a first for a Zelda game of that type. Now with jump, you know, here's the thing. Don't laugh, but I remember Bionic Commander Remastered was the first time he was ever able to jump. Now when you see a scene like this, you start to wonder, I wonder what it's going to look like when it's healed. Huh. Because it's already darkly beautiful in its own right, but then it gets healed and then it's green and verdant and pretty. God, the visuals in this game are, like, really, really fun. Which is... Oh, don't do that. It's, um... Why they use it's just, the cell shade it's just so, that gorgeous. They could, so that it was... 
so that, you know, it wouldn't tax the processor. I mean, if you had realistic graphics, you know, it would, this would be impossible to do, these wide open areas. But yeah, Alundra had that typical progression to it. Like you have, you just start out with a sword, like a dagger, and then you collect items that help you move forward. Like you get a bomb that will allow you to break rocks. You get a, you get a uh, boomerang. You can collect things that are far away from you. Did you get a hook shot? I mean, that's and, standard for Zelda. Yeah, it. I, I can't remember if it had a hook shot, but uh, I feel like it should. <laughs> Am I going the right way? Oh, look, I'm um, me. Nope, I'm going the right See, this is why I like this game, is that if you're going the wrong way, it'll the game will tell you, hey, buddy, you're going someplace you shouldn't be going. Yeah. But, um, I really liked the story of the game, too, because, like, the idea of your character is a dreamwalker, and you end up in a village of people that are, they all have this, like, some sort of sickness that attacks them in their sleep. And so... I'm supposed to go this way. You, you end up going into a lot of people's nightmares Oop. and, like, discovering oh. what's happening. That was illusion. <laughs> oh, guess what? We're going to talk about what I oh, talked no. about before. Concubine. The concubine. Oh, I know, she's getting gooed. The thing is that, um, I see she can't help me, so if I press Y, well, what have we here? nothing can happen. Oh. Like I said, everything in this game is diegetic. So. So if you die at this point, do you die for real? Um, I don't think so. I think she still has magic that can save you. She just can't help you. Do you break everything you find? Huh. Try again.